Did you know that if you looked at a family portrait from the 1800s, there is a pretty good chance that at least one of the people in the photo is dead? Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what is going on here, I am a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. Now, nothing is meant to be insensitive to anyone that is mentioned in the video, but I will be accountable for my art. But if you are a sensitive person, please go somewhere else. I don't want to hear any whinging. You have been warned. And also, I'm just bringing you information from what I have found on the internet. So don't shoot the messenger like some people like to do. And if you like this kind of content, or even if you dislike it, like, dislike, subscribe, do whatever you want. Any interaction helps me get further along in my journey, bringing you content that I hope that you like watching. I absolutely love this shit. That's why I have a YouTube channel of drawing and all the content that I have like scary facts, true crimes, conspiracies and all about aliens. I love all that shit and I love drawing. So I just combine the two and it makes me an extremely happy person. Well, as happy as I can be anyway. With that being said, let's get on with the video. History has some disturbing qualities to it, and this is definitely one of them. And I am talking about post-mortem photography, aka memento mori photography, which memento mori means, remember, you must die, or Victorian death photography. This type of photography was huge in the 1800s to remember their loved ones that usually were taken too soon as the mortality rate was very high back then due to diseases and the medical system basically being non-existent and also no access to treatment and medicines like we have today. People didn't usually live much past their 40s if they even lived that long at all. Diseases such as cholera, diphtheria, measles, scarlet fever, Spanish flu, plagues would just decimate the population. Before the post-mortem photography, the wealthy would hire painters before cameras to paint loved ones in their death states. So capturing family like this was nothing new to them, but there is just something so creepy with the photo version for obvious reasons. But what we find disturbing in the photos today was very comforting for the family members back then. Death portraits were mainly done in the home instead of lugging a dead rello to a studio and also most if not all deaths back then happened in the home. The photographer and the family members would decorate and stage the scene with what they wanted such as flowers, toys, if it was a child who died, objects like clocks, trinkets that meant something to the victim that would give a sense of illusion of life in the portrait. They would then prop up the dead family member depending on age and what they wanted to portray. For example, children were often placed in the sitting position surrounded by toys or other siblings. Babies were either laying down in their crib or either the father or the mother would be holding them and some were even held up by cast iron poles if they wanted them to stand. But this was a fairly unsuccessful method because of the way that the poles were and the weight of people, they would actually move a bit. And this was not good for the, for the cameras back then. Adults would be sitting usually posing with other family members, dogs, friends, or even other animals like livestock. After the photos were taken, some photographers would even paint eyes onto the photo to give more life to the corpse's eyes that would not naturally open after death. Some would even paint rosy cheeks onto the living and leave the dead person pale. So you could obviously identify which was which. Sometimes eyes were forced open with spoons or even glued in place. Family would mourn by either cutting off hair and preserving in a glass jar or jewelry or even wear black for years afterwards. Some even went as far as to make death masks of their loved ones, creating a plaster cast of the dead person's face. Ah, uh, that just gave me shivers and I think that's gone a bit too far. Once the mask was complete, it was placed in the house where it would be viewed like an art piece. No thanks. 
All throughout the 1800s, this was so popular that it really became a ritual for the Victorian people to do when someone died giving a forever life to the deceased person. In 1839, when the daguerreotype was invented, due to the slow shutter, people would have to stay still for roughly a minute and a half. An adult corpse could not be stood as the cast iron stands couldn't really hold them without moving somewhat, which would cause blur in the photos so they were always sitting or placed in a manner that would not allow them to move. Some people tried to position their loved ones so they looked beautiful, and most of the time they did, but some couldn't do it or afford to get the cosmetics done, so contorted faces, rigor mortis, and the disease that they died from can be visibly seen. So some photos are just plain terrifying and confronting, but the clothing worn was always the very best in their wardrobe. Sometimes photographers would take one to two days to arrive to the deceased's home, so decomposition can set in and blood pooling in certain areas can give the skin a patchy grey ash tone. This is when makeup, heavy makeup at that, played a huge part in giving life back to the corpse. It was definitely an art in taking these photos and having them propped up in certain ways. But not all people who used the cast iron posts or poles were dead. If they wanted to hold a certain position for longer without moving because of the old camera's slow shutter speed, as I mentioned before, until they got the technology to use a camera that then was able to take photos for, you know, in three to eight seconds, they used them to stay as still as possible, especially if they wanted to hold up a hand, keep their head in a certain way, etc. As mentioned before, the photos would be blurry with the slightest movement. So even the slightest movement would create the most blurry image. Also objects like a decorative post were used by people to hold onto while standing so they didn't move. Now let's get into a few dark stories from the postmortem photography vault. Three in one casket. On the 25th of January, 1894, a 29-year-old woman named Mary Keller shot and killed her husband, 30-year-old Emil Keller, and their nine-month-old daughter, Anna. She then turned the gun on herself. Both were from Switzerland and had relocated to New York in the US. They had apparently lost one child just after it was born, and this made Mary mentally unstable, and she ended up in a mental hospital. Once she was released, she had another child, which was Anna. But Mary wasn't fully mentally sound, and she started thinking that her husband, Emil, was cheating on her. At around 8.30 p.m. at their home, Mary shot her husband in the heart, killing him instantly, then shot her baby by trying to aim for her heart as well while she was sleeping in her crib, but she ended up getting Anna in the right lung. So the bullet then exited the left side of her body, but she died a day later in hospital. Then she turned the gun on herself and shot herself in the temple. The family was buried in the same coffin, a coffin that was custom built for them all to fit in. Mary's head rested on her husband's shoulder with the side of her head face down where the gunshot wound was. The Parsons Family Murder On Friday the 12th of October 1906 in Houston, Missouri, a whole family was murdered by a 21-year-old man named Jody Hamilton over the sale of corn crops in their house from Parsons to Hamilton for $150. Hamilton was a known thief and lived with the Parsons and he also worked for them, but their relationship turned sour. The Parsons, consisting of 35-year-old Barney, Minnie, his wife, and three children, Jesse, Frankie, and Edward. There was so much bad blood between the family and Hamilton that they just packed up their stuff in their carriage and headed back to their hometown without saying anything to Hamilton. Hamilton wasn't really happy over the deal, which Parsons allegedly haggled that bad that it left Hamilton furious. So after stewing a bit about it, he decided to catch up with the family and confront Barney over it. 
He apparently shot Barney in the leg and then beat him to death. He then allegedly beat his wife Minnie to death with an axe pole and then this is the most disturbing part of all. He apparently slit the throats of the children and beat them. He loaded the bodies back into the carriage and rode it over to the Piney River and threw their bodies in. A fisherman found their bodies as they drifted downstream. They were pulled out of the water and laid out as the picture shows, showing all the bloodied and bruised bodies as evidence and a morning post-mortem photo. Jody confessed to the murders after he was followed out of church, caught wearing Barney's church suit and wedding ring, but pleaded mental insanity from an injury he suffered to his head as a child from a donkey kicking him, but the jury didn't buy it and he was hanged 21st of December 1906, twice apparently, because the first time it didn't work because the rope broke and the second attempt was successful, although there was talk that he actually did die the first time just before they placed him back in the noose again. No sympathy for him if, he, if that's what he'd done to this poor family. The trend of these photographs started to die out around the 1940s and went into a more private, less confronting manner. But just when you thought that it was gone completely, there are still stories of these photos in modern day. Renard Matthews In 2018 in New Orleans, 18-year-old Renard Matthews was shot dead in an alleged street robbery for his mobile phone while out walking his dog. For Renard's funeral, the family had him embalmed and propped up in a chair doing the one thing that he loved most in life when he was alive, playing his Xbox. He also had a basketball game playing on a big TV and his favourite snacks beside him consisting of Doritos, root beer and cereal. 19-year-old Jonathan Parker was arrested on the 10th of November but was acquitted of murder due to the witnesses saying that it was not him, but phone logs and satellite data apparently placed him near the scene. Allegedly, it was over a botched gun sale gone wrong. But also in amongst all the real post-mortem photos of the Victorian era, there is definitely some fakes. So definitely beware if you are looking for authentic pictures. Most of them on the internet are that you will Google, but there is some out there that are definitely fake. Like this one, this one, and that one. They are all fake, allegedly. I did see a few websites that had these ones on that swear black and blue that they are definitely fake because of the nature of the pictures and the fact that they actually back then did not take photos like this of people who had these absolutely horrific type injuries. A lot of people trying to digitally alter some old photos and making them look horrendous like people have deformities or even look supernatural and people are just doing this to sell them off in their stores and it would just take a quick reverse Google to find out where the original images come from and you'll see that some of these um, especially the ones that I have shown you on the screen they do have originals and then you'll see that the people do not look like that so what do you think about these photos does it disturb you as much as it disturbs me and probably a lot of other people out there does it creep you out big time or do you see the beauty in it like the people did back in the 1800s me personally i'm just happy this did die out because uh it is pretty disturbing and i don't think it really would fly today because of Oh, because we're so governed now that I don't think anything like this would be allowed now. So even open caskets are disturbing to me, um, let alone these post-mortem uh, photography photos. It's, it is chilling. It really is. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below. Uh, do you have... Do you have any old photos from the 1800s from generations of family members that could be post-mortem uh, photos? Let me know if you know of anything else disturbing in regards to this. There's, 
quite a few stories out there but these two were probably the main ones that I wanted to mention in this video so yeah let me know so for the illustration that I decided to do for this video today I did a family that was all dead and they're being propped up by god knows what let's just say cast iron uh the old cast iron uh poles that they used and the husband is actually got a a rope to lift his hand and they've all got they've all got these like clips on their eyes with supposedly fishing wire to uh you know make it less uh, uh visible but i obviously i wanted to portray that in the in the illustration that this is what was happening uh they got the clips and they're lifting up their eyes so their eyes are open i just wanted to add that as a disturbing feature and then the husband has his hand with a bit, bit of rope so his hand is being pulled up to then pull the eyes open of his wife I, uh, that just came to me when i was thinking of what i was going to do i thought i had to i had to do that and um then they have a um disturbingly a little baby in the lap of the mother who's also deceased and it's just looking up blankly it's got hollowed out black eyes and uh yeah they're all just standing there dead basically and i wanted to keep the illustration as sepia as i could because i wanted to sort of recreate that real old school olden day uh sort of sepia looking photo and it was actually quite hard to try and keep the colors and mix the colors um enough to keep them separate but have the sort of the different tone running through and all that sort of stuff and i will just play around with colors that's all i do ask me any question about color theory and i couldn't fucking tell you <laughs> because i just wing it but then i also wanted to do a tarnished kind of uh frame and i wanted to sort of make a frame uh, that sort of has stood the test of time but it's also had a lot of um, you know a lot of corrosion over the years and, and it's um, you know it's old it's a bit dirty it's been passed around and yeah I, I sort of portrayed that with the with the cardboard frame which I did and the you'll see in the video as as i'm doing this there was a few ideas that were going around my head to do the frame and it changed so much as you will see and i ended up settling with the style that you'll see at the end it's just a plain style because i wasn't going to get too intricate with cardboard and doing filigree uh doing like a filigree sort of um frame it's just i wasn't going to do it it was just too labor intensive <laughs> yeah and then i added black acrylic paint to a lot of the edges to just um you know seal in that you know that tarnished old 1800s look so yeah that's that's where i went with this and the young boy his face is like that because obviously i, I wanted to do like the the mother's gaunt and the baby's got black hollow eyes the father's got a terrifying gomez type look but the the boy um i want to give him a bit more of a different more even creepier sort of look is his mouth whatever accident he died from it tore his mouth up and they, they all are going into decomposition as as you can see by the i did a very faint green tinge to the skin just to make it disturbing and you'll be proud of me there is no blood in this because i don't felt i feel as though this didn't need blood because it's creepy enough as it is and i just didn't want to add it because like i said want to keep everything in like a sepia color you can tell that this photo is disturbing enough without blood so but anyway this is the end of the video hopefully you watch what is left of the video to see how the illustration turned out and i will see you guys in the next one Bye.